Once upon a time, when Britain was very rich, deep in the vaults of the Bank of England, there was more gold than anywhere else in the world. Safe, people used to say, safe as the Bank of England. Here it is, Mr. Montpelier. I trust you will not be disappointed with its prosaic design. On the contrary, it seems to me a thing of beauty. If not a joy forever. Allow me, Oliver. It looks good. It feels good. It is good. And there's only one other like it. <laughs> Issued in connection with a foreign loan. Yes, we read about it. That's what gave us the idea. The idea? <clears throat> I suppose it does seem a little curious that we should need such a large sum in the form of one note. It certainly is an unusual request. I imagine it's for a business transaction. Very important business, isn't it, Roderick? <laughs> Shall we tell Mr. Garrett? You leave me no alternative. You see, Mr. Garrett, my brother and I require this pretty, exquisite, unique little scrap of paper for a bet. A bet? Did you say a bet? Very important bet. Gentlemen, you astound me. I'm astounded at the purpose for which you require this note. I'm astounded that you should call it a, a scrap of paper. Allow me to draw your attention to the text. I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of one million pounds. <laughs> This consulate is now provided with funds by the United States government for the assistance of needy Americans in London. Well, that's too bad. I'd have thought this would be just the place. Well, that doesn't mean we're not anxious to help. Might find your berth in a cargo ship and you could work your passage home. Well, would there be any chance that I could find work here? Well, if you'd like to call back in a week or two, we'll make inquiries. A week? That's a long time. I could just get a little money to last me through the next few days. I can find work for myself. We can give you a small loan if you can guarantee repayment. Can you offer us any kind of security? Well, I've got a head on my shoulders and a good pair of hands. Unless you don't trust me, that's security, isn't it? Well, it's no security at all. Many people pass through this office making similar requests. If we made an exception, we wouldn't know where to stop. Well, if you like, I'll report back to you every day. Sorry, can't be done. Now, for the price of one shilling, you can join the Anglo-American Society. That'll put you in touch with people in a position to help you. Well, I think on the whole, I'd better try to help myself. Well, that's up to you, sir. Come back if you have no luck. I'll do that. Uh, could I have one of those? Of course. Sorry. <laughs> All gone. Thanks. Lovely muffins, muffins, fresh muffins, lovely muffins, Young man, would you step inside a moment, please? Who, me, sir? Yes, you. Through the front door on your left. Thanks. Good morning, sir. Will you please come in? me to lead the way, sir. 
The young gentleman, sir. Thank you, James. That'll be all. How do you do, Mr... Uh... Adams. Henry Adams. Come and sit down, Mr. Adams. Thank you. You're an American, Mr. Adams. That's right, from New England. Mm -hmm. How well do you know London? Well, not at all, sir. It's my first trip here. I wonder, Mr. Adams, if you'd mind us asking you a few questions. Go right ahead. Maybe ask what you're doing in this country. And what your plans are. One thing at a time, Oliver. Well, I can't say that I have any plans. I'm hoping to find work. As a matter of fact, I landed in Britain by accident. And how is that possible? Well, you see, back home, I have my own little cutter. Oh, well, she's just a 14-footer, but I get a lot of fun out of her. Well, four weeks ago, last Saturday, I was sailing out of the bay. Uh... Well, go on. What was I? You were sailing out of the bay. Oh, yes. Well, towards dusk, I found myself in the thick of a westerly gale. I did the only thing I could and ran before it all night. Next morning, I'd just about given myself up for lost when I was spotted by a brig. And it was the brig that brought you to England? That's right. I earned my passage by working as an unpaid hand, which uh, accounts for my somewhat disreputable appearance. You mustn't worry about that. It's a positive advantage. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't quite follow you, sir. Tell us, Mr. Adams, what sort of work were you engaged in? I had a job with a shipbuilding firm. Would I be right in thinking that you two might be able to offer me some kind of work? Patience, Mr. Adams, patience. If it's not an indelicate question, have you any money? Well, to tell you the truth, my bankroll is zero. What luck! Roderick, what luck! Well, it may seem lucky to you, gentlemen, but it's not very lucky to me. This is your idea of some kind of a joke. I don't think it's very funny. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way. Please don't go, Mr. Adams. You mustn't think we're insensitive, even though my brother is a little tactless. Oliver, give him the letter. I was about to say the same thing myself. The letter. <laughs> For me? For you. Oh, no, you mustn't open it. Not yet. You may open it at, um, two o'clock. Not a moment before. Oh, but this is ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. There's money in it. Oh, well, now, listen to me. I don't need your charity. All I want is an honest job of work. If you can't we do it... We appreciate your honesty, Mr. Adams. That's why we've given you the letter. Jane, show Mr. Adams out. Good luck, Mr. Adams. Why don't you explain what this is all about? You'll soon know. At two o'clock, Mr. Adams, in exactly one hour and ten minutes. One hour and ten minutes? This way, sir. Mr. Adams. Not until two o'clock. Promise. Promise. Goodbye. Ah, honest, intelligent, a stranger to London. And not a penny with which to bless himself. Perfect. Reserved. Um, this way, please. Take this gentleman's order, Horace. Nice, big, juicy steak with all the trimmings, and make it extra thick. 
Cost a tidy bit. That's understood. And a long, cool tankard of ale. Same thing again, please. Again? That's right. And fill that up. Anything wrong? No. No, sir. He's asked for another portion. Hail and all. Do you think he can pay? We'll have to chance it. Serve him, Horace. But don't spare the gristle. Eggs, steak, potatoes, beans, carrots, twice. Trifle cheese, coffee, two quarts of ale. Three and tempers. Thank you. Would you mind waiting just a few minutes? What's it to wait for? All right, Horace. <laughs> that was a wonderful meal. You know, uh, it's amazing how much pleasure you get out of the simple things if you have to get along without them for a while. Very interesting. And now, perhaps, if you pay the bill, I could attend to the other customers. That clock of yours, is it correct? If anything, it's fast. Well, it's fast. How fast? Two minutes. Oh, thank you. Now, I don't wish to be unpleasant, but would you please settle the bill? I want to, but you see... The bill, please. Yes, I know the bill. Exactly. Well, I don't suppose a couple of minutes will make any difference. I'm awfully sorry, but... I don't have anything smaller. Well, uh, uh, just one moment. Maggie, look. Ah! Do you think it's real? What is it? Would you mind just looking at this? Do you think it's genuine? Two notes of this denomination have been issued, but in any case, it's hardly likely to be a forgery. Why not? It would draw too much attention to the owner. No forger would want that. But look at the owner, Mr. Clemens. He's in rags. I can only assume he's an eccentric millionaire. An eccentric millionaire? And you put him at the back of the room. Go and attend him at once. I'm sorry, sir, but I cannot change the note. But it's all I have on me. All? Oh, please don't worry, sir. It's of no consequence, no consequence at all. We're most gratified that you should so much as step foot inside our little establishment. Indeed, sir, I trust you will come here whenever you're seeking peace and quiet. Oh, that's very good of you. Good, sir. It's good of you, sir. You must come whenever you want and have whatever you like. The mere honor of your presence is a reward in itself. I may not be passing this way for quite a while. <laughs> it would be a very poor thing, sir, if I couldn't trust a gentleman as rich as yourself, sir. Even if you do play larks upon the public in the matter of dress. As for the bill, sir, please forget it. It's of no consequence, no consequence at all. 
thank you very much, sir. That's very nice of you. Oh, it's for us to thank you, sir. And I do, sir, from the bottom of my heart. Want something, sir? You remember me? Yes, sir. Well, I've got to see your employers again immediately. They've gone, sir. Gone? Gone abroad, sir. But they were here just an hour ago. They will be back in a month. A month from today. But I can't believe that they... they... If you return it intact at the end of that time, you shall have any job that it is within our power to give you. It may interest you to know that we have a bet on you.
I'd like to have a suit. I thought you might have something ready made. He'll attend to you. I want a suit, please. Uh, something I can walk out in. Ready-made suits. Down the stairs. Oh. Thank you. I hate to interrupt, but would you like to show me some ready-made suits? Yes, I dare say we can fit you up, sir. This way, please. I thought you might have something that was made up for another customer and not collected. Well, we don't go in for that sort of thing here, sir. Oh, here we are, the very thing. Tell Todd to serve him quickly and get him out of the side door. Yes, sir. The sort of thing that's worn in England nowadays? Oh, yes, that's all the fashion. Uh, try the trousers. Huh? Mr. Reed says you've got to get him out of the side entrance, and quick. Well, I know what I'm doing. I've got eyes, haven't I? Uh, it's a little noisy, isn't it? Well, you won't do better, sir, all things considered. You're a little difficult for size, you know. Yes, so I am. Well, it'll do for the time being. I'll take it. Good. Uh, shall I wrap it? No, I'll wear it. Oh, uh, I'd rather not pay you now, if you don't mind. I'd, I'd like to open an account and settle with you in a month. You see, I uh, don't happen to have any small change. Here we go. I suppose a gentleman like you can only be expected to carry large change. Now, look here, Sonny. If I were you, I wouldn't judge strangers by the clothes they wear. I just don't want to embarrass you with a large note. Well, I meant no offense, but while rebukes are in the air, what makes you think we can't change a large note? <laughs> As a matter of fact, we can. In that case, there's no problem. What's up? What's the trouble? What's wanting? I'm just waiting for my change. Well, come, come. Get him his change, Todd. Get going. Change, sir. Change. Hmm. Could it... Is, is it... Would it be the one I saw in the papers on Wednesday? Or was it Thursday? I remember thinking that never would I be blessed with the feel of such a note as this. You had a fool, Todd, a born fool, bringing the gentleman into this part of the shop. <laughs> You'd think we never had dealings with millionaires. <laughs> and take off this jacket, sir. It's only fit for the dustbin. Get Jack half the million. Allow me, sir. Uh, this way, sir. <laughs> the balance is perfect. We were making it for the hospital of Halifax. He was very much of the same build. Uh, one inch off the sleeves. One inch off the sleeves. The cravats, Mr. Reed. I said the new ones from Macclesfield. Oh, yes, yes. First thing in the morning, we shall start to make for you. You'll be needing a morning suit, a dress suit, something for the opera. Oh, now, wait a minute. I don't need all those suits. I only came in here for one suit. The waistcoats, Mr. Reed. Thank you. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. You'll never get through the season without them. Thirty suits is the very minimum. Lord Reddington favors forty-eight. Square up the neck of the back. Oh, I can't give you all those orders. Why, you'd have to wait indefinitely for payments. <laughs> indefinitely. A weak word. Eternally, Mr. Adams. The dressing gowns, Mr. Reed. Thank you. Shrink the front edge a little. Shrink the front edge a little. Now, what about a cycling suit, Mr. Adams? Cycling is all the rage nowadays, and then, of course, there's ascot. I'm not going to be doing any cycling, and I'm not going to be doing any ascotting. Sailing's my hobby. Ah, the sport of kings. <laughs> Very right and proper for a personage such as yourself. I thought racing was the sport of kings. Then it ought to be sailing. <laughs> Nip in the waist a bit. Nip in the waist a bit. And make a note, Arthur, a nautical suit. A nautical suit. The spats, Mr. Reed. Thank you. I'm just a fraction more skirt. Just a fraction more skirt. Mm. It's our pride and glory to see a man of your eminence properly attired for the season. <laughs> the skimpy Mr. Adams would be inconvenient to you and harmful to me. The other cravats, Mr. Reed. Uh, that will be ready for you in the morning. Well, that's fine. I'll just get back into these now. Oh, dear, oh, dear, the humiliation. Still, I suppose there's no alternative. <laughs> your address, Mr. Adams? Well, I don't have an address. I'm changing quarters. Uh, take my advice and stay at Bumble's. Bumbles. The very place. Quiet, modest, and discretion itself. Luckily for you, I have a relative on the management. Leave it to me. Really? Really? 
Really? Really? Thank you very much, Reed. I'm most indebted to you. Which of the suites on the first floor is vacant? None, sir. <coughs> Williams, sir, fetch all the reception staff and the commissionaires from both entrances. Yes, sir. Ah, the bridal suite. How long is it since the Duke of Frognall settled his account? Six months, Mr. Lloyd. I'll move him up. Yes, sir. Prepare the suite immediately. Send up fresh flowers, roses, carnations. I want you to pay particular attention to what I have to say. I am expecting, at any moment, a Mr. Henry Adams. He is somewhat eccentrically dressed, do you understand? Quite unlike our usual clients. But as far as you're concerned, he is attired as correctly as an admiral of the fleet. You will, of course, welcome him with all the discretion for which Bumbles is famed. He happens to be an American millionaire. Go back to the doors and look out for him. I do assure you, Your Grace, it's entirely to your own convenience. You will find the room far less disturbing at night. Never been disturbed at night since I came here. Sometimes I wish I was. The room was previously occupied by my Lord Howard of Howard. Never heard of him. This is where I am and this is where I stay. Oh. What's the meaning of this? Get out all of you. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Carry on. I assure you, Your Grace, it's merely temporary. Temporary be damned. Naturally, I wouldn't put you to the inconvenience of packing your bags. This is intolerable. Come on out with it. What's the meaning of it? If Your Grace will consider the move in all its aspects, I feel sure you'll appreciate its beneficial nature. Uh, naturally, there will be a, a slight reduction. Oh, there will, will there? Sure there ought to be. <laughs> will she be there too? That, Your Grace, is a matter for the housekeeper. Incidentally, as the new room is below the servants' quarters, you will be far more free to indulge uh, your musical inclinations. Shall I? Now let's have the truth, Lloyd. Who have you got coming here? Come on, out with it. You can't bamboozle me. Uh, Mr. Henry Adams, Your Grace, an American. An American? An American millionaire, Your Grace. Your Grace. Are you trying to tell me American money means more than an Englishman's name? I won't stand for it. This country's going to the dogs. Wait, Cabot. Good afternoon, sir. Allow me. Uh, this way, sir. You're expected. If you please, sir. So glad, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Welcome to Bumbles. Parsons, whatever's come over you, carry the gentleman's case. Yes, sir. Certainly, sir. Parsons, get up at once. This way, sir, if you please. We are most honoured that you are staying with us, sir, and we can assure you of every comfort. Good afternoon, sir, and welcome. Wilcox, the register. Yes, sir. If you'll kindly sign, sir. Just here, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And now, if you will step this way, we have reserved for you the bridal suite. Uh, 
Excuse me, sir. Now, what do you suppose he uses that for? Pick it up, boss. Pick it up. <laughs> There's nothing we of the old country like so much as a good sense of humour. This way, sir. I apologize, sir. I trust no damage. If you care to replace it in the case, we'll have it taken up to your suite. This is Bumble's. Yes, sir. The manager's expecting him. Excuse me, sir. This is Mr. Henry Adams. Adams? Did you say Adams? Well, that's right. I understand I'm expected here. Oh, Mr. Adams, I apologize profusely. This has been the most unfortunate misunderstanding. You're an imposter. Parsons, I'm surprised at you. Perhaps you'll have the goodness to leave. I said, would you mind leaving? If you would just sign the register. Oh, well, well, what's going on here? It's just a mistake of the commissioner. Get rid of him. The foolish fellow mistook him for you, Mr. Adams. Quite unforgivable. Excuse me. Up it. This way, please. Fetch the police, Williams, the police. No, no, just a minute. I don't think we need the police. I'd like to have a talk with this gentleman. Oh, can't talk? Well, that doesn't affect your drinking habits, does it? Good. Yeah, perhaps you'll uh, be kind enough to lead the way for us. Certainly, Mr. Adams. Attend to the bodies instantly. Yes, this way, sir. Little, uh, laryngitis. Oh, uh, you're a boxer. Strong man. Well, vaudeville? Oh, um, the circus. Well, what do you know about that? So you see, Rock, whichever way you look at it, I'm in this thing up to the neck. All I was doing was walking around looking for a job. And now look what's happened. I didn't ask for this, and now that I'm in it, I may as well enjoy it. And that's where you could come in. Are you very busy these days? Well, that's great. Why don't you string along with me for the next four weeks? Help me to keep the bank note intact, and I'll settle with you as soon as I get the job from the two old boys. What do you say? <laughs> that's the stuff. It ought to be a pretty good job. Worth 500 pounds a year, anyway. Six. You know, Rock, you've got the right idea. In the meantime, we'll just have to put up with all of this. For the next month, I'm Henry Adams, the American millionaire. <laughs> Aren't you overdoing it a bit? No, oh, well, let's be on our way. set up our consulate entirely for the assistance of our people, that you don't give us the opportunity of rendering service. But for these newspapers, I wouldn't have known of your arrival. How long are you staying? Well, that all depends. Uh, uh, indefinitely. Oh, good. You're in time for the season. Who do you know, Mr. Adam? <laughs> I don't know anyone. 
Except uh, two brothers in Belgrave Square, Oliver and Roderick, something. Really. Oh, the Montpelliers, most worthy gentlemen. Uh, no thanks. Oh, I insist. It's one of my personal Havana selections. Oh. Now that you're here, we must see what we can do for you. Though, as ambassador, I think I should admonish you for not coming before. Uh, well, uh, that isn't strictly true, Your Excellency. I, I was here once before. Then why wasn't I told? Well, it was... Uh, well, I, I was in uh, difficulties over currency. Matter of fact, I still am. You see, this note of mine... Say no more, Mr. Adams. What, a hundred pounds tied you over? Oh, well, that's awfully good of you, but I... I, I... Nonsense. Bring in a hundred pounds immediately for Mr. Henry Adams. In five-pound notes. Oh, thanks very much. I, I told I... you before, we're here to help our nationals. Now to get down to more serious matters. I must open a few doors for you. <laughs> This is my husband. Uh, how do you do? Now, I'm this is a very informal occasion, so I do hope you're going to enjoy it. Lord oh, and Lady Crockington. And if I see you in difficulties with any of my Voltars and friends, I shall fly over and rescue you at once. <laughs> oh, Lord and Lady Hurlingham. Mr. Henry Adams, Lord and Lady Hurlingham, and Lady Jane. And Lady Jane is so fond of horses. Uh, are you interested in horses, Mr. Adams? Oh, yes, indeed. As a matter of fact... Uh, Mr. I... Adams, I want you to meet the Baldwins, the Gloucestershire branch. Not batting in, am I? Not at all. Sir William Strictly. Charming. If you really wish to understand the British, I suggest a visit to the House of Lords. Would you care to come with me? Uh, yes, indeed. As a matter of fact... Well, Mr. Adams, uh, I'm most anxious to introduce you to Mrs. Hooker Orr. Will you forgive me? La Comtesse d'Avignon. Such breeding. Doris likes to play lawn tennis, Mr. Adams. We just can't keep her away from the Wimbledon club. <laughs> Do the ladies play lawn tennis in your country, Mr. Adams? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, and now, Mr. Adams, I want you to make the acquaintance of Sir William Goring. He's an expert on genealogy. Might dig you up some ancestors, excuse me. <laughs> a man of character. Intelligent. We must ask him to come to London. There have been several cases of Americans who discovered a peerage in their family. There you are. What did I tell you? With a name like yours, the West Country might prove fruitful. After all, Adams is quite an old name. <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, what are you two men talking about? I'm going to take you away and give you some tea. I've neglected you quite disgracefully. Well, this is neglect, Duchess. What is it like when you really take care of a fellow? You must come to one of my little dinners. Uncle. What is it, my dear? Doctor and Mrs. Carmichael. Mr. Henry Adams. I'd like to meet him. Well, go ahead, into the scrimmage. I mean on the balcony, alone. Have you succumbed to? I merely thought it might be useful to get him interested in Aunt Grace's charity. A millionaire behind us is just what we need. Oh, if that's your intention, my dear, I'm with you. I'll do my best. Ascot Lords riding, bicycling. <laughs> Poor Miss Adams is going to be quite overworked. My dear, Japonica wants a word with you. She's in a state of acute distress. Her son's joined up with those dreadful liberals. Oh, how foolhardy. You see what it is to be a hostess. She's the only one who isn't allowed to pick her company. Now, I fear I must drag Mr. Adams away from you. Oh, oh what a pity. No, I have a relation who will make my life quite intolerable unless she meets him. Uh, this way, Mr. Adams. General Blunt. Now, where can she be? I left her beside this window. Oh, never mind, sir. I've met so many delightful people. Th th there's no getting out of it, Mr. Adams. My niece can be very determined. Uh, perhaps she's gone out for a breath of fresh air. Ah, there you are. How do you do? Mr. Henry Adams, my niece, Portia Lansdowne. How do you do? I'm afraid you're being rather overworked, Mr. Adams. Yes, indeed. I mean, no. Uh, no. If you'll excuse me, my dear, I must go once more into the breach. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Poor uncle. He hates my aunt's parties almost as much as I do. Nothing but talk, talk, talk. And nobody says anything, do they? <laughs> well, nothing very serious. Serious talk at English receptions just isn't cricket, Mr. Adams. Cricket? Bad form. The only way is to get well out of range of the hostess. 
Oh, it's raining. Too bad. It was much nicer out here. Taking you at your word. Do you still think it's nice right here? It's nicer than ever. I used to hide here when I was a little girl. It's be pleasant to be brought up in a place like this. I dare say your own surroundings are far more impressive. <laughs> well, uh, different. It's raining. <laughs> when we get back in, ought there be some raised eyebrows? Of course. We'll invent a reason as to why we're here. Why invent a reason? Couldn't I just say that it's been wonderful to spend a few moments with the most charming girl at the party? They can't possibly be out here. It's raining. You're trapped, aren't you? Suits me. What about you? I tell you what we'll do. We'll say we were discussing the Cromarty Home for Motherless Babies. The what? The Cromarty Home for Motherless Babies. Oh. <laughs> They'd hardly swallow that. Oh, but they would. It's my aunt's pet charity. And being a millionaire, they'd expect you to take an interest in charities. You do, don't you? Well, yes, I, I do, but... Uh... And to prove it, you could say you're coming to the opening of our new premises. It's next Wednesday. That is, if you'd like to. Uh, will you be there? Of course. I'll be there. Will you please look this way, Mr. Adams? Will you please look this way? Hold it. Thank you very much. Charles, absolutely charmed. Come in, little child. <laughs> They're adorable, aren't they? Adorable. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the last part of our proceedings. Thanks to the generosity of our many friends, we have paid off the mortgage on the home and the running costs for one whole year. to make a great deal of money. I therefore propose putting up for auction this magnificent contemporary vase, most kindly presented by Mrs. Landon Smythe. And to set the ball rolling, my husband has offered the first bid of 20 pounds. Now then, I wonder who would like to top that. 20 pounds, we are bid. 20 30 pounds. pounds. 30 pounds, that's a lovely stop. Now then, 30 pounds. 40 pounds. That's very fine. Who will improve on 40? 70 pounds. Oh, oh, Mr. Henry Adams, thank you so much. Now we really are moving. Seven is my lucky number. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Now, for this very unusual object, I am offered 70 pounds. Uh, 80 pounds. 80 pounds, and well worth it. Now, let's go up in leaps and bounds. 82 pounds and 10 shillings. <laughs> 82 pounds, 10 shillings for Mr. Henry Adams. What a charmingly whimsical gesture. 100 pounds. Oh, thank you so much for talking. What? 100 pounds? That's our first three figures. How about 120 pounds? I see. Well, who would like to advance me something over 100 pounds? 500 pounds. Five? Most generous. 1,000 pounds. Oh, Mrs. Milford, thank you so much. 1,000 pounds. 1,500 pounds. Thank you. 4,000 pounds. Oh, very exciting. 4,500? 4,500 pounds. Now, I wonder if we couldn't possibly get a wonderful round figure of 5,000 pounds. 5,000 pounds. 5,000 pounds. Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams offers 5,000 pounds. Oh, On 5,000 pounds. Any advance? Any advance? Then going to Mr. Henry Adams.
items for five thousand pounds. Going, going, go. <laughs> Oh, it was so clever of you to do it that way. For a moment, I thought you weren't going to bid anymore. Your bars, Mr. Adams. Your bars. Another link between our two great countries. Hell yeah, yeah. Well done, America. <laughs> to our ears in debt and we're getting deeper every minute. It's like walking on quicksand. How much of the ambassador's money do we have left? It's all gone? The charities? Cost money to be a millionaire. Well, we, we've got to clear out of here somehow. We will, we'll go into hiding till the end of the month. We have to go somewhere. I don't care where, just so we go. You fix it. Oh. That's a load off my mind. From now on, the masquerade is over. always look bad at night. But this morning, the sun is shining Mr. and the birds are singing. We can't throw in the cards when the game is only halfway through. Oh. Hampshire House. Portia. Tonight, Rock, I'm going to tell her the truth. Tell her quite simply that I don't even own the shirt on my back. Oh, no, John, no, John, no, John, no. Oh, no, John, no, John, no, John, no. Oh, Malcolm, I will give you jewels. I will make you rich and free. I've got to see you alone. When? Now. I've got something very important to tell you. No, John, no, John, no, John, no. Keep it stiff, Mr. Adams. Good evening, Your Excellency. Charlie. Her is in the music. Oh, here comes the American ambassador with a friend of Mr. Adams. Friend of mine? Yes, someone called Eastbourne or Worthing or something. His Excellency, the American Ambassador, and Mr. Lloyd Hastings. Excuse me, please. Wallace, how good of you to come. Good evening, my dear. Oh, Mr. Ambassador. Mr. Adams, this is Mr. Lloyd Hastings. How do you do? It's nice of you to ask me over, Duchess. He's very anxious to see his old friend again. Well, well uh, <laughs> same Henry. Oh, it's <laughs> wonderful seeing you. The first time in ten years. I used to work with his father. Charming. The minute I saw those pictures of you in the papers, I made up my mind to track you down. We must find a little corner so you can both have a long talk. But first of all, you must meet my family. Well, we'll get together later, then. Later. I always knew that boy would make good. 
He had it in him right from the time he was under the bus. Nadia, this is my husband. No, don't get up, you. I wouldn't want to disturb a game of chess. No, chess isn't a game, it's a disease. And this is my father, Sir John Mansard. He's a great collector of first editions. How do you do? And do come over and meet my sister. She just needs your name. so lovely out here in the moonlight. It, it makes it more difficult to tell you than I thought it was going to be. Here in the moonlight, it seems as though words are quite unnecessary. Yeah, but you see, I... Uh, well, I have a confession to make. And it's rather embarrassing. You mustn't worry about that. It's quite customary to be embarrassed. You don't know what it is. When you hear it, you might not like it. My reply shall be all that you hope for. I wish I could count on that. You can. You see, I already know. You know? I suppose I've known all the time, really. I have a confession to make, too. I feel the same. Of course. You... You don't think I'm forward, do you? things that I've got to tell you. Now it's more important. And I've got lots of important things to tell you, too. But don't let's spoil this moment with words. Somehow they seem quite inadequate. Portia! Where are you? Where is Mr. Adams? Mr. Hastings wants to talk to him. Now, Henry, you've got to help me. As we're alone, I can tell you the whole story. I'm in trouble. And you'll be able to get me out of it quite easily. I've made a large investment in a gold mine. The Good Hope Gold Mine. You may have heard of it. It's a sound proposition in every way, but I need more capital. And that's where you come in. Support for me with this stage could make all the difference between failure and success. I have decided to invest I know that we haven't met for several years, but I was a friend of the family, and you know I wouldn't let you down. Up to now, we haven't wasted a dime. Badly held up by the forms. We had a close timber of all sorts. Now, once we get the cash to go ahead, it's all plain sailing. My idea is to float a new company and give every shareholder a chance to subscribe to the new issue. Well, Bumble, sir. We're here, sir. Well, here we are. Home already. Come on in. Have a drink. Oh, here we are. Now, unreal your story. Unreal it? What, again? What do you mean, again? Good hopes, Henry. Good hopes. <laughs> Good hopes. Henry, you've got me worried. What did you take over at Hampshire House? <laughs> I took the hand of the loveliest girl in the world. You mean the Duchess of Cromarty's niece? That's right. Henry, on top of all this, you're marrying into the peerage? Congratulations. Now about this mine, Henry. The land's there, the gold's there. Tons and tons of it. We only have to go another 50 feet and we'll strike. It won't take more than a week. Oh, congratulations. You're a made man. Oh, I'm a ruined man, Henry. I've sunk everything I have into that mine, and I can't hold out. All my own money. If the shares go much lower, I'm out. But there isn't a capitalist in town who'll take a chance. I can understand that. We capitalists get our money tied up. Henry, I'm not asking you for money. Well, what are you asking me for, then? Have you ever had any reason to mistrust me? My father trusted you. That's good enough for me. Then all I ask for, Henry, is the use of your name. That's all I want. Your name for one week. Well, use it, by all means. Only what's my name got to do with your gold mine? It's a millionaire's name. It'll save my life. And you'll benefit too, Henry. Mark my words. Oh, I'm on the rise again. And I'm going to take you with me, higher than you already are. You'll make money too. We're going to play skyrockets right in the middle of the stock market. And what did you take over at Hampshire House? Mr. John Craven. Mr. Walter Craven. 
Mr. Walter Craddock. Calling me? Yes, sir. Telephone call from your office, sir. Mr. Lloyd Hastings. Oh, thank you. Thanks for coming so quickly, Craddock. Those good hopes. What are they standing at this morning? Standing? They're on the verge of collapse. Fine. Buy me 20,000 on margin. You had a touch of the sun or something? I don't get your meaning. Oh, one other item. Buy me an additional 20,000 in the name of Adams. Henry Adams. The Henry Adams? Well, who else? He happens to be a very good friend of mine. Thanks, Craddock. I'll give you a call later. Hello? Hello? My good hope. My three thousand. My good hope. My three thousand. Good night. My good hope. Good night. Bye. Three, 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 three. My good hope. Three, 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 three. Five, three, six, three. Five, two thousand. My good hope. Good night. My good hope. Good night. My good hope. Good night. Bye. What's behind this? Henry Adams, the American millionaire. He knows the mine. Finally, I've got you all to myself. Yes, Henry. Without any distractions. Yes, Henry. So you've got to listen to me. Yes, Henry. Portia. I'm not a millionaire. Of course you aren't. The banknote, it doesn't belong to me. It doesn't even exist. The whole thing's a complete mistake. It's a misunderstanding. In fact, I don't have a single possession that I can call my own. My poor, poor lamb. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm serious. So you're living in the bridal suite at Bumbles, free of charge. That's right. And it costs you nothing to eat or drink. That's right. And the tailor, out of the goodness of his heart, has fitted you out with all this finery. Well, I don't know about the goodness of his heart, but he's fitted me out all right. And you really expect me to believe you? Well, when you hear how the whole thing happened, you will. You see... And now I think I'm... it's time to stop teasing. No, I'm not teasing. I'm not rich. I have no money. I'm not a millionaire. Aren't you carrying this joke a little far? It's not a joke. It's true. Henry, you can take me home. Well, don't you want to hear how it happened? I've heard quite enough. Take me home. Well, I'm, I fully understand. There's no need right. to say any more. Do as I ask. Take me home. Just a minute, sir. Uh, send the account to Bumble. But it's only a shilly, Mr. Adams. Never mind. Send it. Portia, I can understand you're not wanting to marry a poor man, You're but... simply adding insult to injury. Insult? What insult? As though I can't see through your ridiculous story. It's quite obvious you invented the whole thing. Why should I? Obviously, to test the strength of my love. So that's it. Now, you listen to me. Though I care whether you're rich or poor, but I do care if you think it makes any difference. Portia, you're wonderful. And you're horrible. And if you're trying to get out of the 5,000 pounds you promised my aunt, you may as well know now that I shall never marry a man who isn't charitable. You're going to listen to me if I have to bind you hand and foot. Oh, Henry, pull me down! Not until we get to Bumble. Henry, you please, pull me down! Is that you, Hastings? Credit, kid. Those good hopes. They're up to 20 shillings. Bye. And that's the whole story. <laughs> when I take the note back to the two old boys on Thursday, it'll be quite a relief. My boy, you've done it again. Cleaned up. Made a fortune. 16,000 pounds. It's all gone according to plan. How do you do? Now, look here, Hayes. Things this is no... Why, good. with you behind that mine, it doesn't matter if there was gold there or not. I bought you 20,000 shares at two and three. They've gone up to a pound. 
Take away your original investment and you got 15750 And it's all yours, my boy, every penny. I said you'd never regret this, Henry, and you never will. Portia. What's the matter? You blithering, blundering, bull-nosed, block-headed, pot-bellied, ham-fisted jackass. Henry! Wait a minute! You can't go like that! Henry, wait! Yes, sir? I've come to see Miss Lansdowne. My apologies, sir. Our instructions are Miss Lansdowne is not to be disturbed. It's nonsense. Tell her it's Mr. Henry Adams and that it's very urgent. If I may say so, sir, that would only add fuel, as it were, to the fire. Is that Miss Lansdowne's handbag, sir? Yes, it is, but look, I've got to see In the it. event of your being importunate, sir, I was told to say Miss Lansdowne hoped she would never set eyes on you again. I could wish the message had been more delicately phrased. Good day to you, sir. 490, 95, 500. Thank you, Your Grace. Not all. Now, Lloyd, I want my old suite back. It's hardly possible, Your Grace. Mr. Adams is still here. Has he paid his account? That doesn't arise, Your Grace. If it arises for an Englishman and a gentleman, why not for a trumped-up American? We could accommodate you in the Marlborough suite. No, I want my own suite back. If we don't stand up to these Yankee upstarts that we're treading all over us, it's a question of principle. He's a public figure, Your Grace, of considerable standing. Stuff and nonsense. How do you know he's a millionaire? Nothing but hearsay. At Bumbles, as you know, we're more concerned with the type of clientele than their personal incomes. I'm not standing here to be insulted. What type do you think it is that doesn't even tip the barmaid? I mean the chambermaid. That little Rennie hasn't had one tip, she told me herself. If you don't get him out of that suite, Lloyd, I'll do it myself. Rayner? Sir? What is Mr. Adams' account at the moment? A hundred and thirty-six pounds, sir. Up to last Thursday. Is that all? I'm afraid so, sir. Pity. <laughs> I couldn't, sir. It wouldn't be right. Come on, Remy. Be a sport. Supposing I was caught. You won't be caught. It's only a bit of fun. I shouldn't. Really, I shouldn't. You can say it was my orders. Come on, Remy. You like a joke, don't you? Oh, but, sir... Do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit of a lark, sir, isn't it? It's a bit of a Thanks, Rock. Come in. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I want you to take this around to Hampshire House in the morning. Be sure that Portia gets it herself. If you don't bring me an answer directly from her, you're not the man I think you are. Come on. What 
what you said, sir. What was that? The note, sir. Oh, splendid. <laughs> Clever little girl. Thank you, sir. Clever little girl. Good evening, my lady. Good evening, madam. Good, Good evening, my lord. Good evening. The older tunes have so much more melody. This modern stuff seems to be quite discordant. It's all gossip. Nothing but gossip. Fellas only got to talk with a Yankee accent, and everyone thinks he's a millionaire. They can get away with anything. If you want my opinion, I don't believe he's got a million pound note. I tell you, my dear, the man is an adventurer. Don't ask me where I got it from. It was told to me in strictest confidence by someone very close to him. He never even had a million pound note. Yeah. If Henry Adams is a millionaire, then I'm the king of Arabia. There's no such thing as a million pound note. You mean he's a... Of course, we know it's only a rumour, but uh, my editor wondered whether perhaps you'd cash the note. Right, dear. Then if you'd be so good as to show it to me, we'll give you a front-page denial. What for? I'm getting tired of showing this note to people. Well, your refusal at this moment would only feed the rumour. Oh, rumour, rumour, rumour. What difference does it make whether I'm a millionaire or not? Or not? <laughs> Just as you like, Mr. Adams. Either way, there's a story. You've got earthquakes, shipwrecks and, and, and Lloyd George, and still you have to pick on me for a story. I'll show it to you. Rock? Where did you put the note? Would you like me to uh, fetch the police? No, I would not like you to fetch the police. And perhaps you'd like me to contact the bank? What I would like you to do is to stop poking your nose around here and get out. Out! Hold it quite still, Mr. Adams. <laughs> Million pound mystery. Following a rumor that Henry Adams no longer possesses the much talked of million pound note. What? Our reporter sought a special interview with him last night. On being asked to produce the note, Henry Adams was reluctant and when pressed unable to do so. When it was suggested that he might call the police or get in touch with the bank, he was adamant in refusing to take either of these most obvious remedies. In the interests of Anglo-American relations, Mr. Adams should lose no opportunity of clearing up the mystery. Particularly as it is well known that London society has freely opened its doors to this notorious American visitor. An imposter? Who would have thought it? Just shows how simple and trusting we are. I've always said you're far too easily imposed upon. Charles, from now on our doors are closed to Mr. Henry Adams. Very good, Your Grace. And I should think so too. What extraordinary creatures women are. She told me she wasn't speaking to Henry Adams. And if we're going to avoid a scandal, she mustn't. I'm going straight to Bumbles. No, my dear, you're going to have a good rest. I'll send you down to the country for a complete change of air. It'll make the whole difference. Whatever you may do, I'm going to Henry. If you were an ordinary girl, it wouldn't matter. But alas, we are not an ordinary family. I'm going, Aunt Grace. And you can't stop me. I'm sorry, Portia. It's the one thing I can do. I don't wish to press you, Mr. Adams, but if you can see your way to settling the account, it will enable us to bring our books up to date. I thought you said there was no hurry. Well, it is customary to settle weekly at Bumble's, but naturally, in your case, we were happy to let it run for three weeks. I wouldn't press you either, but the appalling rise in the cost of labor makes it imperative. There are two gentlemen waiting in the sitting room. Uh, to see I can't you, see them now. I'm busy. If you're kindly settled, Mr. Adams, we'll detain you no longer. But you said that you'd wait eternally. 
Oh, uh, think of speech. Well, I realize that, but to demand immediate payment just because I can't lay my hands on the note, it's, it's unreasonable. Well, 130 pounds is a big sum. Mine's 150. There are three more gentlemen waiting to see you, No, sir. no, I can't see them. Tell them I'm busy. Yes, sir. I'm not trying to dodge payment, but you, you put me in this suite unconditionally. Possibly, and you foisted friend. those suits on me with a definite statement that you'd wait as long as I like. It's beyond my powers to extend further credit. <laughs> Contrary to our policy. I demand a settlement. I insist on a settlement. Excuse me, sir, but... I told not... you to tell him I was busy. Very good, sir. Very well, gentlemen. You'll get your money. I'll settle my accounts in full. When? This afternoon. You've made the great error of thinking that I depend on that note. So happens that my real fortune is tied up in mining. Gold mining. Rock, I want you to be sure Miss Lansdowne gets that letter without delay. Well, good morning, gentlemen. You're a fascinating species. Sometime you must take a good look at yourselves. Under a microscope. <laughs> You'll be paid this afternoon, gentlemen, in full. There's no cause for anxiety. <laughs> find him myself. Oh, there you are. Thank the Lord you've come. Have you found the note? Those shares of mine, Hastings. I want to sell them. I have to pay some bills. Sell? Why, nobody would accept those shares as a gift. You've ruined me, my boy. I'm finished. <laughs> what are you talking about? You told me yourself they were worth 20,000 pounds. That was yesterday. The note, Henry. Where is it? You did have one, didn't you? Well, of course I had one. Isn't there any sanity left around here? Where does all this up and down business go on? Front Morton Street, the stock exchange. That's where I'm going. No, Henry, you can't. You can't go in there. Henry, Henry, wait for me. Henry. Henry, Henry, you can't go in there. Strangers aren't allowed. And because of all the trouble, I'm entitled to speak for myself. Henry, they'll throw you out. Henry. <laughs> They call themselves businessmen. I warned you, Henry, it's tradition. They do it to Rockefeller himself. <clears throat> What's going on? What are they all here for? You, sir. Me? It's ridiculous. I don't know that much. What about them? It seems they've all come a cropper on good hope, sir. Throwing around up here so them reporters will spot you. They here too? Yes, sir. Troves on. Uh, not that way, sir. Round the back. Excuse me, sir. Would you mind clearing the porch, please? Mr. Adams! Mr. Adams! Have you the wherewithal to settle this unfortunate business? I'm very sorry, Lloyd, but you'll have to wait after all. Wait? But what are you going to do? The fire is teeming with your wretched victims. Victims? I don't even know half of them. Tradesmen, shareholders in your fake mine, and journalists. Bumbles will never survive. Shareholders. Small shareholders. Shareholders. They could save themselves, you, me, and the mine. All I've got to do is persuade them to hang on to their shares. Don't worry, Lloyd. Things may be all right after all. It won't work, Mr. Adams. Don't go. There'll be a riot. Anything might happen. Anything. There he is. That's him. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I, 
I understand that you've all come here to see me. <laughs> and that some of you have invested your money in the Good Hope Gold Mine. <laughs> Naturally, you all want to know if your money is safe. Now, I can sympathize with those feelings. What about the note? Yes. <laughs> are you or are you not a millionaire? Whether I'm a millionaire or not is beside the point. A great many people invested in good hopes purely on your recommendation. Please, please, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll just listen to me for a minute, You'll see that far from there being any need for panic, you've all made what will turn out to be a very sound investment. Does that mean, Mr. Adams, you found the note? Yes, on the note. What the devil is going on? Mm, fine old Alabaloo, sir. The hunt's up. Mark you, he's giving them a run for their money. Don't talk in riddles, man. Make yourself clear. Henry Adams, sir. Haven't you read the papers? They say he never had no bank note. Serve him right. Sir, if he don't find it, they'll lynch him. Ah, they wouldn't do that. Not British. Let me in. Excuse me, sir. If I was you, sir, I'd nip round the back. I do not nip. I do not nip. Now, please, 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 ladies and gentlemen, don't you see? If you'll all use a little common sense and hold on to your shares for another week, there's every chance... Yes, that's all very plausible, Mr. Adams. But we're all still in the dark as to whether you're a man of substance or merely have the gift of the gab. <laughs> but it just isn't reasonable that you'd rather gamble on my reputation than on a good chance of finding gold. You're the gambler, sir. What difference does it make what I am? Providing that there's gold in the mine. No, the fellow's pumping us off. Oh, please, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all face the facts like sane adult human beings. Let's listen to the man. Yes, thank you, madam. We are willing to listen to anybody. It's all right, sir. What's all right? The bridal suite. We're getting it back. Change the sheets, Mr. Lloyd said, and dust the room. Look, sir. They're taking all these clothes, isn't it, Mama? How dare you, sir? How dare you? Dashed impertinent. Take them back at once. A lot of shopkeepers taking the law into your own hands. Who do you think you are? Rennie, this has gone too far. A lark's one thing, but when a fellow's expected to pay his tailor's bill, it's no joke. Come with me. So it seems to me that there's been a great deal of hysteria over what is, after all, nothing more than a scrap of paper. And I'm willing to stake my reputation. In fact, I'll give you my word of honor that if, in addition to holding on, you buy more shares, you'll all be amply rewarded. That gold mine is genuine. That's right, my boy, and what's more, we can prove it. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is the very man who can clear up any lingering doubts you may have about the Good Hope Gold shares. Mr. Lloyd Hastings has such faith in them that... They'll be returned, Mr. Adams, when you settle the account. Mr. Adams talks of honor, but he can't even honor his tailor's bill. It's a case of conspiracy, actionable in law. You've taken my all! Scoundrel! Avenge the widows! Avenge the widows! The widows! The widows! No fighting, Mr. Adams, I forbid it. Note. Where was it? Under your carpet, my instructions. Why on earth would you do a thing like that? I don't like Yankees. I don't like what you do with your money. But the things we do for it are a dash sight worse. You're entitled to throw down the glove. Well, if I haven't got a glove, I'll have to accept your apology. You're a sportsman. I'm beginning to like you. Show it to him, Henry. Show him the note. The man's all right, sir. Bless you, Mr. Adams. Bless you. Amen. 
You've got a half an hour, ladies and gentlemen, in which to buy, buy, buy. Make way, please. Make way, please. Excuse me, sir. Do you mind, sir? Excuse me, please. Henry! <laughs> the whole thing was a misunderstanding, entirely due to the press. Reeds are eternally at your service. Good girl. Uh, oh, Mr. Adams, there will be champagne in the bridal suite with the compliments of bumpers. Good. Hold it quite still, Mr. Adams. One month to the day. In fact, to the very hour. A little the worse for wear, but still intact. Mm. Congratulations, Mr. Adams. Well, now that I've uh, carried out my side of the bargain to your satisfaction, what was the bet? Well, you see, I maintain that such is people's attitude to the symbol of wealth, that by just having that little scrap of paper in your possession, without ever cashing it, you could have everything you wanted. Whereas I maintain that as you were denied the right to cash it, it would be quite useless to you. But I only have to look at you, Mr. Adams, to realize I was mistaken. Never have I won a bet more conclusively. <laughs> I tell you, Roderick, that note can do anything. Mm. It even made him 20,000 pounds on the stock exchange. May I say something? By Certainly. all means, my dear. I agree that the note is extremely powerful, but it isn't quite true to say that it can do anything. You see, I love Henry because he's Henry. The fact is that she left me when she thought I was rich and came back to me only when she discovered that I was really poor. If anything, the note came between us. Oh, oh, do you hear that, Oliver? Come, come, Mr. Adams. But for the note, you'd never have met. How do you know they might have been fated to meet? We're not discussing what might have been. We're concerned only with the facts. Precisely, and the note came between them. It isn't all powerful. As a matter of fact, my dear Oliver, I'm not so sure you won the bet. You can't get out of it, Roderick. Mr. Adams returned the note intact and now has everything he wants. The mere fact that there was another stiff has nothing to do with it. The note almost wrecked them. It brought them together. Coachman, on your way.